this is Lily with UBOT Studio and today we're going to be talking about how to use the scrape attribute function in UBOT 4. Botting is not always about posting information to the web. Sometimes we need to pull information from the web. Fortunately, UBOT Studio is perfect for both. You can search, find, save everything from URLs and keywords to phone numbers, usernames, and zip codes. If you're not sure why any of this would be useful, just imagine, for example, that you had a text file with all the usernames of everyone who liked a certain product, website, or movie on a podcast popular social network. How much easier would it be to target them with your own accounts? To get that list, you'd need to scrape it from the elements on the page, and this is what we're going to show you how to do in this tutorial. So, let's say we would like to scrape the results of this keyword, and we have a keyword in there, Hurricane Irene. For some reason, we want the information on what's going on, and we want to save it directly to a file. So. Let's choose our method of storing the information we're going to scrape. You can either use the add item list command or you can go under system commands and use the save to file command. So for now, let's use the save to file command. So we have our save to file. Here's the file path. It's a .txt file and we want it to save whatever information we scrape from this page to that file. Okay, so once you have that all ready, you have your file ready for your information, go under browser functions under parameters and find the scrape attribute function. When you're ready, drag that into this area it's designated it's called the content to save area and this is where the scrape attribute function goes so we want to scrape just one item for now we want to scrape just this item the href for this item and place it into our file so once we're ready click the icon for element selector which is this little icon right here and when you're ready move your mouse over the item you'd like to scrape and click it. And notice that the code for that item, the HTML for that item has already been placed in this area. What you would then do under this area designated attribute to scrape, you're going to decide what would you like to scrape from the information you have so far. Would you like to scrape the name, the inner text, the value, the ID, whatever you'd like to scrape. For now, we're going to focus on the href. We just want the href for the code we have on that item. So click that and then click OK for the scrape attribute function and then click OK for the save to file command. Once you run your script, the href for the item we wanted, just that item has been saved to a file. What if we wanted to scrape the href for the results for the keyword we place in there? Every single result that came up from searching for that keyword. So let's go into our scrape attribute command. And we already have the code for that item we chose. To make the code a bit more broad and then have it recognize that, okay, this item on the page is a result, I need to scrape that. We're going to have to go into the advanced element editor area and by clicking this icon right here that's how we'll get to it so this is the code we have and we're going to extract what we need from there we're going to make things kind of broad and use a wild card to make things broad and grab the results we need so we're going to use Okay, let's see, tag name. Tag name, we can't really do anything with it because the only results we get from tag name is just A, and we can't do much with that. Inner text, we can't really do much with that because that's a very specific title. Outer HTML, okay, this is a bit more broad. We can mess with this a bit and get results from it. So this is going to change. So that is what is going to be replaced by a wildcard. This is definitely going to change. So wildcard will go here and everything after this is definitely going to change. So we're going to insert a wildcard right there too. 
And don't forget to choose wildcard from this drop down menu right here because that's how it knows to look for the code. It's using this method right here to look for the results on the page. So once you've placed the wildcards in the appropriate places, click add and this is what the selector is going to use to find the items it needs and then click OK. So we have it looking for the href, it's going to scrape the href and then click OK when you're done. So let's run the script and see what happens. Let's go into our file. All the items that met our criteria using the wildcards have been scraped to the file. And we have various URLs right here from msn to abc.com. So whatever results came up as a result of looking up that keyword has been scraped to the file, the hrefs. Okay, so what if for some reason you wanted to save, you wanted to add the results to a list? And this works pretty much like the save to file command, except you'll have to name a list. So let's get a list named. You'll find the add item to list command under data command. And you don't want to use add list to list because we're not, we don't have a list already that we're adding to another list. We're not adding anything from the file that can be done later. We're just adding an item to a list. So we're creating a list and then filling it with items. So let's drag that in there. And actually, let's name it Hurricane Irene. And we're going to be populating that list with our scraped content. So we're going to have to create a new scrape attribute criteria for it. So click your element selector, go find an example. So we're going to use this code right here to help us find the other results. And then let's mess with the code a bit so that it's a bit broad. So we're scraping every result we get from that keyword. Let's make this bigger so that we can work with it a little better. And we're going to be using the outer HTML attribute since it's easier to mess with. So that is definitely going to change. So that needs to be a wildcard. That is going to change. So that needs to be a wildcard. And this is definitely going to change. So we're using the wildcard method and add. So this is the this is what it's going to be using to find the results. This area right here. Click OK when you're done. So let's say for this example, we want to find, we want to scrape the attributes inner text. We want the inner text of the items we found, the results that came up on this page. So that's what we're going to be scraping. Everything's ready. So click OK. And just to make sure that our file isn't being populated with duplicate results, we're going to include a clear list command at the top of the script. And we're going to be clearing the list Hurricane Irene. So click OK. So when we run our script, our file should be cleared out and replaced with the results of our scrape. And this is the results we got from scraping the inner text. So there are many ways to scrape items. There are many ways to store the items you scraped. And um, we make it very easy for you. You can use regular expression if you feel comfortable enough to do that. But if not, the element selector is really efficient in terms of finding items and scraping items. You can also set up a loop where you can have it go through as how many, however many pages you would like to and scrape the rest of the results there. So here is an example of a loop with an if command where, okay, we have the loop looping five times and we're saying if something exists. Now let's look at the exists function. All we're looking for is if this next button is on the page. So as long as this next button is on the page, keep going, keep scraping and keep clicking the next button. So the way I selected the next button was just click the element selector and just go in and click it and it's selected and it's ready to go. So we click OK on that. And so we're saying loop five times only if the next button exists on the page. 
If it does, then click the next button. Just you just drag the next button into the then field and see it looks alike. But we only need one, so we'll just click OK and delete one. So I just wanted you guys to see how I got that in there. You just drag the button you want to click into the area. So we're saying if the next button exists, click the next button. Wait five seconds. And of course, the wait command is under the flow commands. It's right there. And then once that has been clicked, the page has been loaded after five seconds. That's why you're waiting. You're adding the items on that page to the list. So you're scraping the items on the page to a list. And then if the next button is not on the page, that's why we have the else area right here. It says to stop the script. And then once that happens, or after the loop goes through five times, then the contents of that list will be saved to the file. So if we had a longer loop cycle and we said loop 10 times and within the sixth try, there is no next button, it would go through the if command. It would look at then, since there's no next button, it would move on to the else command and stop the script. Once the script is stopped, then the contents of the list should be saved to a file. So we're setting two conditions here. We're saying loop five times and then stop, or if there's no next button, then stop too, and then save to the file. You might want to place the save to file command in the else command if you want the script to stop and then save to file. So we have two save to files in here and only one will work and you don't have to worry about having duplicate information saved to the file. So let's run our script and see what happens. So we're on the first page. We have the results for what we're looking for. Let's run our script and notice that it's going through each page. This is the second page. And it'll do that five times until the cycles are done or until there is no next. Okay. And then once it's done, the contents of the list that we just scraped are saved to the file on our desktop. And then once we go to our desktop, here are the names for all the information that came up for the pages. So that's one way to set things up. And you can also use a loop while if you want with the exist qualifier. The exist qualifier can be found under parameters, qualifier functions. That's just one way to look for an item. Or you can use a search page, whichever one works for you. So that's just one way to set up a loop with the scrape attribute function. And that's there are many ways to scrape items from a page and it doesn't have to be a search engine page. It can be whatever information you're trying to store for later use. So that's how to use the scrape attribute function specifically. Thanks for paying attention and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Take care.